from what I'd learned from Do The Right Thing is, you know, you put something in front of an audience, it's quite hard because you have to market it. Anything with a script is quite hard. Anything that needs a lot of research. And so I was thinking, what's the antithesis of research? And also I, I, I genuinely felt that there was a gap in the market for... I'm, I want to be able to know about subjects. I want to be able to ask someone cleverer than me about something. And as a comedian, I am given license to act the fool. So I'm allowed to say, like, I'm not a journalist. I don't have to pretend that I know everything all the time. And so the idea of having an expert who could explain things like Brexit or Northern Ireland or sectarianism, I really want to do Scottish sectarianism in the next series, or transport or school systems or all these sorts of things you you have a handle on and I know a bit about because I work in you know I write the news quiz and things like that but I don't know there's like there's definite gaps in my knowledge I thought if I get comedians to ask these questions we are allowed to ask stupid things but still get to something interesting I think it's a brilliant format I think it's a really good idea I think it's exactly the sort of thing that BBC3 should be making but I know that if I took it to them a They'd do something weird where everybody's got to stand up and put an egg up their arse or something. You know, we've got to have people moving, like League of Their Own on Sky, when it's just meant to be people talking. And also, they'd make someone else host it. And I knew if I did it as a podcast, I was allowed to host it myself, because it's my idea. So this podcast is called Any Stupid Questions? Any Stupid Questions. Do you have a, a regular co-host? Or no, they... that's just so me, that one, change. yeah. It's got a producer it's produced by ed morish who again is someone i've worked with on radio for quite a lot rather than having guests because it is more about the expert so it is about who we've invited in with their with their knowledge it doesn't rely on any sort of comedy dynamic between me and someone else and if it was in front of a live audience maybe i'd want someone else there to kind of be sparking off but i sort of feel that i I don't think it needs it i mean i was saying earlier about like the chemistry between people but because this is about an actual thing this isn't just us trying to be funny it's about it's genuinely about trying to inform people. It does have this element of, I, I think people should know stuff. The one in the British Empire was the most fascinating one because I knew so little about it. And especially with all the Brexit stuff going on and people saying, oh, it can be Empire 2.0. And then you talk to someone who's an expert on the British Empire and you realise what an awful, awful thing that is because we're not taught about it in schools. And so that, that was, a, it was a real eye-opener for me. You managed, in that one in particular, you managed to get into the subject in the way that a dead-eyed factual programme, because all the contributors feel they need to be on the game and catching people out, yeah. you, you get nothing said. Yeah. Whereas if you come in with these innocent questions of, I really don't get how, why is it that, that the railways always held up as a, as a good thing? Yeah. And, and to have an expert say, the British didn't even build the railways, yeah. you actually get to deeper truths than a so-called factual show would. Absolutely. And it's, uh, I think that the fact that it's not combative is why it's so good. So I think it was our the very first one we did, actually, which we did in front of an audience because it was at the London Podcast Festival. But we had an expert on the NHS come in. And he was say, I was saying like the, what I wanted it to be. You see, you know like when people go on Question Time and the audience member asks a question and they already have their agenda and they know what they want to hear. And basically it's framed as a question but it's you are a terrible person why are you doing these terrible things and everybody's got their agenda and their party line whether they're a politician or whether the audience member with a, a, an, an axe to grind no one says anything you learn nothing watching question time absolutely nothing yeah. because no one gives anything away and also one of the other things that we say is if there's anything that you say and you want it edited out we'll edit it out like there's never any we're not trying to trick you into saying something that you don't want to say um i think the one on the on Parliament, there were a couple of edit points just because the guests that we had in, I think it's just like, oh, you know, I shouldn't really have said that or, you know, I don't really want to be naming politicians. And we're like, totally fine, we'll cut it out. It's not, we're not here to trick you. We really want to know. I haven't got a clue how the parliamentary system works. Please tell me. There's something you said a few minutes ago, which was, I want people to know stuff. Because I wanted to ask you, why do you podcast? Yeah. I suspect that might be just the reason right there. Well, yeah, I mean, like, both of both of those podcasts, and even the film one, in fact, and I guess this is why I'm a writer and a stand-up, is about sharing your perspective of the world with other people. And so with Do The Right Thing, even though it's ridiculous, there is some information in there. You do learn how to spot an antique or how to cross shark-infested waters or how to land a plane if the pilot's died. You learn it in a ridiculously frivolous way, but there is genuine information being imparted. And Any Stupid Questions takes that even further. It is about 
you know, in an era where we sneer at experts and wanting opinion rather than fact, it's about asking people their expertise. One of the things that we looked at doing with Any Stupid Questions was having both sides of the political spectrum represented. And we were like, no, that, that, that isn't what it's meant to be. It's you, we have chosen you as an expert. You tell us what you know. And if someone decides to disagree with you, I mean, we're not the BBC. We can put out what we want. But if someone disagrees with you, then maybe we'll get them on as an expert. And most of the time, people are really balanced. I was talking to our Brexit expert and I was trying to get him to say that Brexit was a stupid <laughs> idea. And even he was like, actually, if you look at why it happened... It's because people felt marginalised and it was the only bit of change they ever felt they could enact. You can keep going. We are going to do another Brexit episode, yeah. Um, So we're planning to start up again in the new year and I would like to get Brexit done really quickly because, you know, there's loads of stuff about the deal I don't understand. There's loads of stuff about I don't get why... What is, what is Canada plus, plus, plus? What is Norway plus? What do these things mean? Because everybody now talks about it as if we already know what that means. I haven't got a clue. From a, this is so wanky. I just, I am learning stuff. And that's why I love doing it. I can go in and I can say, because it's my show, I can A, decide what subjects we're doing. And then I can go, I've, I've always wanted to know why are, why are houses so expensive? What is going on with the housing system? Why aren't people building more council houses? All of that. I'm allowed to ask that to an expert. That's great. I re- if I wasn't interested, I probably wouldn't even do the podcast. But I get to, I get to learn things. And the amount of effort I have to put in is just turn up, <laughs> really. I mean, I don't even... I, I can go in with no research and go, I haven't got a clue what this is. Can you tell me about it? Danielle, where can we find you and where can we find your staff? I have a website that's hideously out of date. Feel free to go and explore that. I have a SoundCloud account, Danielle Ward. So if you just search Danielle Ward on SoundCloud, on that is some weird things that... I've never done as podcast because it's not a continuation of anything because, you know, you also have to update things for them to be podcasts. It's me playing with different audio. So I've got both my musicals are on there, recorded just live, wild in a room. There's little short stories set to music. There's some weird sketches set to music. That's all on SoundCloud. There is also Do the Right Thing, Any Stupid Questions, and Film Fandango, all of which are available through your normal podcast providers. So the best thing for us to do would be to subscribe to Do the Right Thing and Any Stupid Questions. Yes, subscribe, listen, review, do all that sort of stuff. And and in all honesty, if you want to follow me in a day-to-day way, then it's at Captain Ward on Twitter. Brilliant. That's probably the best way of doing it. High five. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. absolutely brilliant. Thanks for listening. That's the Podcast Producers Podcast. There's a link to all the episodes in the description. And if you've reached this far in the episode, why not leave me a comment? It'd be lovely to hear from you or even maybe a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, you will be really helping me to keep this thing going. So I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Podcast Producers Podcast. Can you please help my daddy get 1,000 subscribers? Just click on his face. Thanks. Bye.